I came out into a reign of light. Like the Matrix, like the code in the Matrix movie, except for it was white. In the in a darkness, it was just white snow of light. That's what it was. Snowflakes of light coming down. And please like, share, and subscribe, and invite every one of your friends to come to this channel. It's a great channel. There's so much to learn and understand. My name is David Masters, and when I was just about turning 13 years old, I had an out-of-body experience that lasted three whole days. It was seemingly a normal day for me. And when I got up in the morning, I noticed something very strange. My conscious self was sitting up in a corner of my room watching me sleep. So I actually didn't wake up until after that time where my body had separated from my consciousness and it was watching me and I woke up like I would every other morning and began to go about my day and my consciousness was watching and following. So I got out of bed, I went to brush my teeth, I did all the things that I would ordinarily do except for it felt like I was uh, like on remote control. Like almost like I was just doing the things robotically that I would ordinarily do throughout the course of my day, but without my consciousness inside of me. And I watched it. Now, everything that I would ordinarily do, I ate my breakfast, I got on the school bus, I went to school, I mingled with my friends, I had this experience, which was seemingly, it was, to me, it was so surreal because how could I do this without being inside my body? Which was, you know, I'd lived that way all my whole life and all of a sudden my consciousness is outside my body watching me. It was almost like my mind or my, my conscious mind, whatever you want to call it, was like a balloon attached to my wrist and everywhere I went I followed it with my body. And so at the, at the normal routine things of my day, it just kept happening all day long. I went home, uh, I had dinner with my family, and there I am watching myself talk to my mom and my dad and add them asking me what I did that day. And then I got tired and I went to bed. And when I was asleep, I watched myself from the corner of the ceiling again. Next morning, the same thing happens all night long. I'm watching, watching. I'm wondering what happened to me? Where? How come I'm not in my body, right? Why am I not? in me the way I would ordinarily be. I had no answer. But it, it's so weird because I knew that it was me. I knew that it was my, my awareness of, of myself and who I am watching this little person below me. And so we were separate. The two things were completely separate. The next day I wake up, my body wakes up, I go about my day the same way. Absolutely nothing changed in my life even though my consciousness was outside of my body. And, you know, I would walk to school, I would talk to my friends, I'd do the nor normal things, I would skateboard and play like a little boy, and my consciousness was just there again. Talked to my parents, went to bed, still on the ceiling, watching my body. Next day it happened again. Same thing, same routine. Now, and, and I start to wonder, how long is this going to last? Like, I thought, I didn't know how long I was going to be outside of my body watching all this going on. So I, at the end of the third day, my body went to sleep. I'm sitting in the corner of the ceiling. And then the next morning, which would be the beginning of the fourth day of this experience, when I woke up, I was back in my body. And I was fully aware of all the things that I had seen myself do during that period of three days that I was outside my body. But I began to realize something about my life. And that is, I realized that I am not my body. That whatever I am, whoever, whatever you want to call me, was a, a, a singular consciousness and that it was separate from my body. So even though I, I realized that even though our body and our conscious mind are intertwined together that in fact they aren't this they aren't actually stuck together you know it's like you don't have a um, you don't have a container that you can't your conscious mind can't be removed from 
And so as I began to realize, you know, that this was a very strange experience for me, but at the same time, I saw that I'm, I'm not my body, that my consciousness is separate and different from my body. And so that began a whole series of experiences in my life that changed the course of my life. When I was 17 years old, um, I had an experience where I got very angry with my father. And this was the, probably the most angry I'd ever been in my life. And, and I'm, I'm connecting this to my out-of-body experience because that day I decided I'm out of here. I'm going to go out of this house and I'm never coming back. So I start walking down the street and I just, I left the house in a rage. I was just fuming. I walked probably 300 yards, right? And all of a sudden I hear a voice and the voice says to me, there's nothing out there for you. And I stopped for a minute. I thought, where did that voice come from? Now, again, I want to, I want to relate this to my out-of-body experience because I realized that I wasn't subject just to the, the natural laws of, of my physicality, that there was something more going on in my life from that point on, right? This is one of those important moments because after I heard that voice say to me, there's nothing out there for you. I tended to look up into the heavens and it was a foggy day because I lived right near the beach. And I saw these enormous faces of angels, two angels. And I thought, what is going on here? And again, the voice said to me, there's nothing out here for you. And I thought, okay, this is a warning to me. This is a real warning to me and I need to listen to it. So I turned back around I went home, I apologized to my dad for being so angry, and I started to change because I was a very angry child. I don't know why I was angry, I was just kind of born that way, and I was very rebellious and angry and difficult to deal with and selfish. I was a very selfish child as well, most children are. But at this point, I really began to see something, and that was that I had more of what I would call a superconscious mind. Let me try to describe this, the superconscious mind. The superconscious mind is the part of all of us, I believe, that is connected to our natural intuition. But our natural intuition is shackled. It's almost like you have handcuffs on, but you have mind cuffs. You have, a, you have something, a, a restraining thing on your mind, and you don't realize that it's there. And when you get quiet long enough, and this is why you know, people who are known to be um, very consistent meditators, their blood pressure goes down, you know, the, the respiratory system improves, every part of your health begins to respond to that. So it, it, it integrates, the superconscious mind is the, is the conscious, the higher self, the self that's up here. See, this is your conscious mind right here. This is where you're looking at the world through here, right? But if you have an elevated perspective, when you get quiet enough, and you rise above, you rise above the thought processes. And let me, t let me give you an example. I'll show you how this works. If you will, imagine for a moment a pink elephant. Just close your eyes and just see a giant pink elephant there, okay? Now, I want you just to take and flow the energy that you have from your mind down into your hands, into your fingers. Flow that energy down there for just a moment. And as you do, it could be both hands, left hand or right hand, doesn't matter. Become aware of your thumb and just give your energy to your thumb. Then go to your next finger. Give your energy to it. You'll feel it tingle. You'll, it'll get warm a little bit. Next finger. Go to the next finger. It'll become warm and slightly tingly. And when that happens, just shift to the next finger and to the little finger and then start with your thumb again. Now the question is, what happens to the elephant? The elephant disappears because what you're doing is you're directing the energy of your mind away from thought substance, away from images that, are, that you, can, you can pull up any image in your mind and then flow your energy down into your hand as an anchor and focus in the now moment. What that's doing is that's freeing you from captivity of thought. And so I started to really transform my life and and I started after that I started meditating and it's it, it is a very simple meditation 
um, the, the scripture has a uh, uh, in uh, it's called be still and know that I am God and so I started to just focus on being quiet in my life and because I did not want to die I realized at an early age that I was sort of I had two possible destinies like everybody has two blueprints of a life that can be built right and I realized that I didn't want to die I was too young to die and it wasn't worth dying for being angry and frustrated and rebellious so I, I started meditating with this be still and know an exercise and I spent three years in, in what felt like a black cave of my mind so every time I would close my eyes all I would see is black nothing just not even many thoughts even though thoughts would come and try to take me away from being still and quiet then I would reset and go back to being still and quiet I did that for three years I didn't see anything in there it was just a black tunnel one day at the end of three years I saw at the end of what appeared to be a tunnel a tiny little dot of light and I thought ah I'm going in a direction right so I meditated for another two years every day and through this meditation I became very aware of myself in relationship to other people how I was very selfish and I was just totally self-centered and I just became more and more aware of how that affected my relationships with people my family my friends you know my life so at the end of two more years I got closer and closer and closer to the end of this dark tunnel that I was in in my own mind until one day I got so close to finally coming out of the end of this tunnel and when I did I came out into a rain of light like the matrix like the code in the matrix movie except for it was white in the in a darkness it was just white snow of light that's what it was snowflakes of light coming down but then I had this realization and again I was at that point I was 23 years old I realized now I can begin living my real life because see we before we transition from being just about ourselves and just being selfish um, there, there is a place where you you cross a dividing line between just thinking about yourself and then be, being able to see the bigger picture and more things about the, the nature of existence and life itself so to elaborate on meditation it is a path that you walk um, the scripture says narrow is the path that leads to life and few are those that find it but broad is the way that leads to destruction and many go that way meditation is a narrow path and it is a, a path of self-discipline and but it actually is not a complicated process uh, and as a matter of fact when you begin to get accustomed to meditating every day it becomes naturally integrated so you never forget to do it you just start your day with meditation and when I talk about meditation it's very simple becoming aware of the now moment focusing it on your hands for example as an, as an anchor and you can tell when you're giving your attention to the moment because your hands become a little bit warm and a little bit tingly and that's how you know you're giving your attention to this present moment when you're giving your attention if you're forcing it your hands can actually go numb that's not what you want you don't want to force your attention see and I, I talked about the distinction a little bit about the difference between using force and will the force of will as opposed to allowing allow your energy to emanate from your, your the middle of your forehead as you become aware of the middle of your forehead you simply flow your energy down your arm into your hand now the purpose of all of this is that as you become more quiet and you become more centered in in your everyday experiences I want to discuss a little bit more about these different layers of consciousness that we can experience now there's a, a simple equation and it is this that if you can first become aware that you feel that something is wrong um, there's a famous quotation in the movie the matrix 
I know why you're here. It's because you feel that something's wrong. You felt it your entire life. And it's there like a splinter in your mind driving you mad. If you feel that there's something wrong with your life, that's the beginning. That's where the opening occurs for you to explore the next level. Because it's one thing to say, see something, my life is not complete. I'm not happy in the world that I live in. I'm not happy with my job. My relationship is difficult. I want to understand why. So the first part of this equation, and you know, when I was a young boy, I had a lot of questions. And one of my questions is why, why me? Why am I me? Isn't that a fundamental question right there? What makes me who I am? Why me? Why was I born into this family? Why was I born into this world? I could have been anybody else. So the question then comes because that's a very fundamental question because it goes to a bigger point, which is if you begin to discover, first of all, there's two things that you discover. The first thing you discover is, and it's much easier by the way, is who you are not. You're not who you think you are. For the most part, we, we all have imaginations and that could be either good or bad, right? You know, and so we, a lot of people walk around with a lot of guilt and, the, and they, they don't know why they feel guilty. And then people have fear and they have anxiety about all kinds of things. And most people don't realize, wait a minute, why do I have this? What, what, what's the point of all this? Why is this? Why do I drag this around like a suitcase full of bricks? You don't have to. So you, it's. When I help people to begin this journey, I say the first thing, the first truth that you see is a truth about yourself. And a lot of times the truth about yourself is a lot of what you think about yourself isn't true. And the reason why it isn't true is because your life has been like a fairy tale that's been told to you and you just believed it. And so the minute you realize you don't have to believe a lot of things that you've been told and a lot of things that you've been learned that, that have been in, sort of taught into you. In that moment, there's a new space that's opened up. And I, I, I would equate it to you get a spiritual machete and you start whacking away at the high grass because you can't see where you're going. You just start to whack down that high grass in your mind. And then all of a sudden, as you're going through life, you see that you're in a clearing. Thank you everyone for listening. I appreciate being uh, invited to be on the channel. Thank you to Vivian. And please like, share and subscribe and invite every one of your friends to come to this channel. It's a great channel. There's so much to learn and understand and it's so transformative. So thank you very much for having me here.